Namaste, everybody. Thank you for joining the practice today. As always, please practice according to your condition and your ability level. Feel free to leave out the variations I give for advanced, more advanced practitioners. Modify as you see fit. And remember that this is an offering. So what you transmit, what you're feeling, um, to some effect has an effect on everybody. So try to feel good. strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other Om Shanti 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 so now let's do the mantra for purification three times if you happen to know it you can chant along with me if not just imagine you're singing through the voice of the guru and you're 
describe all the benefits of the purification of the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Tashtanga Toki Wa Yaha Smarit Padri Kaksham Savaya Dihatra Hasti Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Tashtanga Toki Wa Yaha Smarit Padri Kaksham Savaya Dihatra Hasti Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Tashtanga Toki Wa Yaha Smarit Padri Kaksham Sabaya Dihantra Ha Sajivi So now, let's start off a little bit of pranayama. Just sit comfortably and sit tall and straight. If it's too much to sit in the cross-legged position, you can always sit in a chair, straight back chair, with your feet flat on the ground and your legs parallel to one another. And just make sure your back is right against the back of the chair. So we're gonna just do the main breathing today, alternate nostril breathing with the breath retention. So there's no set rhythm for this. So just, it's, it's a very easy breath, so you just Hold, you inhale and the exhale for about the same duration, same quality of breath. On the hold, you try to hold it as long as you can comfortably. So don't go until you until the breath has to explode out of the body when you exhale. It should be a nice stream of breath out. During the breath retention, we're doing the root and the throat lock. For the root lock, you imagine you're lifting a pelvic floor. So you contract all the muscles of the perineum, pull them up towards the navel. So you feel tight down here. For the throat lock, you raise the chest up as you inhale, inflate the lungs. Then hold the breath, bring the chin right on the chest. So you, the idea is get the chest up so you don't have to hunch your back when you bring your chin down. So you want to keep, again, your back straight, your neck straight. And you bring the attention to the space between the eyebrows to seal off the lock completely. You bring the tongue to the teeth, the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. So I'll guide you through this, don't worry. So you start with your left. Inhale through the left, hold the breath, both block both nostrils, exhale through the right, inhale back through the right, block both nostrils, exhale through the left. So, um, let's go. so left hand yana mudra, second finger and thumb form a circle, other three fingers extended on the left knee, right hand, Vishnu mudra, second and third fingers fold down towards the palm, turn the palm towards you, and that becomes a mudra that we use for pranayama. The right thumb for the right nostril, right ring finger for the left nostril, always use your right hand. Let's begin. So sitting up tall and straight, preparing by exhaling, empty the lungs completely. Then close off the right side, inhale through the left. Hold the breath, plug the nose, bring the attention to the space between the eyebrows. Remember to throat, uh, engage the throat in a root lock. Keep the attention at the space between the eyebrows. Everything stops. All movements of the body, all fluctuations of the mind, and all the emotions imagined are all frozen. Pretend you held the breath as long as you can. Exhale through the right side now. Release your right thumb. Inhale again, fill up. Raise the chest, then hold both sides of the nose closed again. Hold the breath. Tension all through the space between your eyebrows again. Exhale slowly through the left side. Inhale to the left. Hold the breath. Do one more together. Pretend that we hold the breath as long as we can. 
keep the back straight, all the attention fixed at the space between your eyebrows to attract all the prana there, all the vital force. Exhale through the right side, slowly release the locks, release the tension in the throat to the root area. Inhale through the right side, filling up again, inflating the lungs, raising the chest, and hold the breath, chin on the chest. to concentrate, keep your attention to the space and to the eyebrows. Exhale now through the left side, slowly release the locks, gradually let the breath out. Continue on your own. Be unconcerned. Just pretend you're the witness watching it all. Just keep pulling your mind back to the space to your eyebrows. Keep on working at your concentration skills. of your left side, conclude, don't rush, complete the cycle, don't shortchange the breath retention.
down to your death, the right hand just rests on the right knee. Just take a moment to assess the state of the body and the mind, the emotions. With a clear and calm mind, we can begin the practice in serenity. Now we're going to start off with charging breathing. Bring the feet about 10 inches apart and the arms up above the head. Inhale from the soles of feet right up to the fingertips. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold the breath and the attention at the fingertips. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down, soles of feet. Feel as we can see the movement of the breath. Inhale, bring the earth's energy right up to the body. Feel it rising up, visualize it coming right up. Coming you up, right up to the fingertips. Then hold it there, hold the breath. Exhale, all the way back down to soles of feet. Feel as though that charge is flushing right down through the body. Six, seven, eight. Inhale again, last time, right up to the fingertips. Bring all the earth's energy up there to your attention. Track it there to the fingertips, then hold it there, hold the breath. Exhale all the way back down. Feel fully charged by that earth's energy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the arms down now. We'll continue with the warm up exercises. Continue to pretend you're the witness watching the body move all by itself. Start to roll the head in circles. You can place your hands on your hips. Try to see if you can see the floor in all directions as you move your head around. Try to touch the ears to the shoulders, the chin to the chest, back of the head to the top of the back. And then change the direction of rotation. And then release the arms, feels all their heavy books, and just allow them to Roll them around your body, go from side to side. And then slow it down. Right hand, right hip. You can bring the left foot forward a little bit and from the right for a balance. And then imagine you have a weight in the right hand. Swing the arm forward. As before, go backwards. Forward again. If you have any shoulder issues, you can hold your support with your left hand and back. Forward. Feel as though you want to up to throw a ball and back. And then the other way. Right foot a little bit in front of the left. Left arm forward. And back. Forward again. again and back. Bring your feet apart 10 inches, it's the same line, toes on the same line, bring your arms up, take hold your opposite elbows and bend to your left, bend to the right. And the left again, stretch the, left side, the side body without folding, making folds in the underside. Start to make little circles with your head and shoulders mostly and your neck. And then start to bring your chest and your upper back into the movement as well. If you feel asked to do so, you can circle the whole trunk now. Make large circles, use the momentum of the body coming down to bring you right back up. And then, other way, starting off little circles shoulders first mostly, neck, and then start to bring your chest and your upper back into the movement, 
and then as you light the whole body, again, always according to your condition. And come all the way back up and release the arms. Shake out the wrists. Move the fingers very, very rapidly. And then up and down. Good. Now, if you want, you can hold on to a wall or something or a chair and then swing the right leg back and forth. Let's do it fast. Lean forward a little bit so you can get your shoulder to the knee. And then throw your head and your leg back. Imagine you're trying to kick yourself in the head from behind. Loosen up the hip. Near, you can do it with your arms extended out to the side. And release. Good. Last exercise. Bring your arms up over the head. Or turn the palms up towards the sky. Lift up off the heels. And come back down. Rock back on your heels. Lift the toes and push into your toes. Come up again. The navel nice and long and back down and press up and down. Last time come up. This time stay up. Keep pushing through the hands. Get tall. Imagine trying to push the ceiling right through the roof of the house. Apartment, whatever. And then back down and release. So now let's come to the front of the mat. Surya Namaskar. Bring the hands to the heart. Imagine you're facing the sun that's shining down this warmth and this light on you. And that's light to the warmth is a representative of God's love and light. So make this an offering towards God and all beings everywhere. Surya Namaskar. Raise your arms up over the head. Don't worry about the breath, just move the body the way that feels comfortable and um, natural. Right foot back into a lunge, sink down to the seat. Come back in the high plank. The breath will figure it out and allow the body to move with ease and steadiness of motion. Knees, chest, and forehead down, or chin. Come into your cobra. And then back again. Bring the seat all the way back, walk the knees both time. Forehead to the ground. Glide forward, brush the nose to the ground, come forward into cobra, flatten out the toes. Once again, all the way back and bend the toes under as you bring your feet back. Then you glide forward, nice and aligned by pointing your toes, flattening out the feet. Roll over your toes, back into Adamukha Savanasana, lift the seat up, bring the chest down. Boot to the hands, bring the right foot forward. If it's too difficult to do this, you can lower the knee down. Use the right foot, right hand to draw the foot a little bit for closer to the hands. And bring the feet back together, chest on the thighs, head down. Body gets the legs. Come all the way up to standing, raise your arms over the head. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up over the head. Go down. Fold the body in half. Left foot back this time into your lunge. Sink down to the seat, push the seat in. Come into high plank. Lower down knees, chest, and forehead, or chin again, and then glide through the two arms into cobra, all the way back into child's pose. Again, glide forward into your cobra, toes flat, all the way back. You can bend your toes under as you go back into your child's pose. Once again, push with your toes, come forward, and flatten your toes as you raise your head in your cobra. Roll over your toes. Adamukha Savanasana, downward facing dog, melt the heart. Left foot steps forward to the hands again, make your adjustments as you need to. Feet come together, pull the body against the legs, head down. Come right up to standing, arch back. Bring the hands back to the heart. Reach up and back, hips form. Create space, approach your true nature, which is infinite, which is formless. Right foot back into a lunge. Coming back into high plank, lower down knees, chest, and forehead to double close the body. Scoop right through into cobra, shoulders back, chest high, head back. Roll over your toes, right back into double facing dog this time. Boot to the hands, right foot steps forward. 
feet come together, bow to the legs, adjust your humbleness. Come all the way up, standing salute. Bring the hands back to the heart. Up again. Try to tap into consciousness of the movement. Opening up your heart, raising your eyes and your head up. We are surrendering. Adjust your the motion, left foot back. And when you come down, with your head down to the ground, expressing humbleness, humbleness, humility. Come forward to cobra. Back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward. Feet come together. Pull the body against the legs, head down. Come right up to standing. Reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. And up again. Let's explore different variations. Pull the body down onto your legs. Bend your knees. Bring your belly onto your thighs. Join the hands behind the back. Pull the hands back. Telescope the chest forward. And then use the body to push the legs further back. Try to bring your forehead to the shins, especially if your legs are straight. Glue the whole front of the body against the legs. Arms over the head. Stretch your arms way forward in front of the head. And release the hands. Bring the right foot back. Lower the knee down. Sink down to the seat. Bring the arms up this time. Kapiasana. Make a shape of a crescent and pull the body by the hips. And then bring the hands back down. Now plant your hands. Swing your left leg all the way up and back into three-legged dog. Raise the left leg up. Come forward into your plank position. Shoulders over the fingertips. Keep your elbows close to the body. Try to lower your chest down first. If you need to, you can always bring your knee down at the same time. And then your toes meet together on the ground and some come right through into cobra. Back into Adamukha Savanasana. Feel as though you're doing a dance. Connect all the movements seamlessly. Right leg comes up, three-legged dog. Step the foot between your hands. Back knee down, sit down to the seat. Again, push the seat in. Raise your arms up over the head. Curl the tail under. Telescope the body by the hips. And then bring the hands back down. Left foot comes in to right. Chest on your thighs, join the hands. Extend through the crown and then again. Fold down, plunge your head down towards the earth, Uttanasana. Release the hands, sweep them up over the body, over the head. Bring the hands back to the heart. And again, reach the arms up. Bury your mind deep in the heart. And then watch the body move with more, even more steadiness and grace and ease. Bend your knees, land your belly on your thighs, join the hands, extend to the crown. Imagine trying to push your chest beyond your knees and face to the shins as your head comes down if your legs are straight. Otherwise, just do your best and keep your knees bent if you need to. And then release the hands. Left foot back. Lower the knee down. Sink your seat all the way forward. Drop your seat right close to the front heel. Arms over the head. Crest and move. Pull the arms back. Pull the body by the hips. And then release. Bring your hands down. Swing the right leg all the way up and back. Three-legged dog. Ekapada Adamukha Savanasana. Come forward. Shoulders over the fingertips again. Elbows come close in towards the rib basket so you can give, get the support to lower down with control. Right into cobra. Down and facing dog. Lift the seat up and back. Melt the heart. Left leg comes up and back. And step the foot between the hands softly. Not making a noise, any noise. Drop your seat down. All the movements done in a way that is graceful, that's beautiful to watch. Remember, it's an offering. Plant your hands down, slide the right foot in to meet the left. Chest on your thighs, extend the arms behind your back and pull them over your head. Bow down as though in humbleness. All the movements reflecting the utmost direct um, devotion and love. And bring your hands back to the heart. Another variation here. Be open to all experiences. They all teach you something. Fold down into Uttanasana. Lift the head and chest. Press into your hands. And then so you can come back into Chaturanga. If you're hovering above the ground, if it's too much, just walk back and lie on your belly. We're making, making our way into upward facing dog. If it's too much, to lift your hips and knees up with the ground, keep your hips on your head, on your ground. What? If you can, lift your hips, slide forward, pulse a little bit, try to get your chest open a little bit more, your head back. Your nose up high like a dog howling at the moon. Imitate the shape, copy the dog physically and even mentally and emotionally. Roll your toes back and downward facing dog and this is where you really can see 
and express the humbleness of the dog and the loyalty of the dog to its master. Stretch out your back just like a dog does. Send your heart towards the ground, keep your arms long. Head can touch the ground or tap the top head of the ground if you can with your head. Now from here, lift the heels, bend the knees up between your hands. Bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Pull the body against the legs, Uttanasana. Right up to standing. Arch back as you see fit. Hands to the heart. One more time. Pull your arms over the head, reach back, hips forward. Come forward and down into Uttanasana. Lift the head and chest, press into your hands. And as you go back, you bend your elbows so you land softly, not like a big, jerky, um, hard landing. Come up into upward facing dog or a cobra. And then from here, we're going to oscillate back and forth between the upward and downward. Our, um, arch the back as you come into downward facing dog and round your back as you make your transition in between the poses. Uncoil to upward facing dog. Tuck your chin, round your back again. Pull the knee one and then downward facing dog. Melt the heart. One more time. Roll over your toes, shoulders, over your fingertips. Then uncoil, bring your chest forward, your head back. Right back the other way. Tuck your chin in. Melt the heart. Soften every sense of the heart. And then lift the heels, bend the knees up to the hands. Spring forward or walk forward. Pull the body against the legs. And you come all the way up to Hasta Uttanasana, standing salute. Bring your hands back to the heart. From the heart, inhale up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart. Remain established in divine love towards all. Let go of all expectations. Let go of all attachments to the results. Do the practice because it must be done. Release the hands. So let's now come into some standing poses. So we're going to stand on the left foot first. Ballet pose. Take hold of the heel from the inside. The thumbs behind the heel. And then see if you can raise your arm leg at the same time. So some of this might look like more like a T. You try to get your fingers and your toes at the same height. If you're more flexible, it might look more like the letter Y. You lean a little bit to your left so that you can um, get that line between your fingers and the toes nice and even. Bring your leg closer to the shoulder. Now if you want to try and let go of the foot, you have to engage the leg muscles so the foot doesn't fall. So. Keep strong through the leg and let go of the foot if you want. See if it'll float and not drop down. And then slowly lower your leg. Try not to lower it all the way down. Come into gliding eagle. So now you're going to dip forward like you're swooping down from a great height. Arch the back, bring the right leg up higher, higher than the head. Arms out wide. If you're having trouble balance, you can take your fingertips to the ground until you find the balance, and then fly your arms up. Push into your left foot, come right back. Try it on the other side now. Standing firm on your right foot, lift your left heel up, gaze at a point in front to keep your balance, and then raise your leg and the arm up. Lift the chest again, adjust so that your fingers and toes are roughly the same height or higher. Lean a little bit to the right. Try to get your leg close to the shoulder if you're flexible. Gaze up as an offering. Be magnificent like a dancer. And if you like, you can try to let go of the foot so really engage the leg. Try not to allow the foot to drop. transition into eagle so again engage your leg muscles so it doesn't come crashing down you have to sort of play with your toes a little bit so just shift your weight onto your toes so that you can control your movement so all movements are soft and graceful feel free to take your fingertips to the ground if you start to lose the balance so I'm going to turn to the side here uh, another view try to get your Back to arch a little bit. Bring your left foot up high as you can. Then 
it from here, step it to the right, the press into the right foot and come back. Good. So now we're going to try another sequence. Eagle. Well, let's try Natarajasana first. So standing on your left foot, bring the right leg up and hold the foot across the front of you so that the shin is parallel to knee. If it drops down a little bit, no big deal. But just try to get the toes pointed. If it's too much to float, you can rest it on your left leg as a modification. From here, left wrist over right. Fingers in a straight line, make sure your elbows are not dropping down. And then bend, work your hips a little bit. Visualize the dancing Shiva statue, trying to make yourself look like that form. Dharma says three times blessed are those who can copy their teacher physically, mentally, and spiritually more willing there for you to, to show you all the tricks that they know. Now from here, stand up, keep the right knee high and see if you wrap your leg around the standing leg. Twist your left a little bit and you might be able to hook your foot. If it doesn't hook, don't worry about it. Just keep your foot hanging out to the side if you need to. Bend your left arm over top of the right. Pull the elbows in front of the chest, in front of the shoulders. Sink down a little bit more. Try to keep your back straight, shoulders over your hips. Sink down a little bit more if you can. Concentrate, imagine your eagle about to take flight. And release. Keep on watching yourself, like the witness watching, see everything as we perceive everything through the eyes of God with unconditional love and non-judgment. Take your left foot up, here again, your toes on the same line as your knee if you can. Bend the standing leg, work the hips a little bit, let it float, or again, rest it on your right thigh. This time, your right wrist on top of your left. Just imagine an actor who's always taking on different roles. We do this through the practice. We merge with all the forms, try to be one with them. This helps to cultivate compassion and appreciation for all beings. And from here, lift up again. Bring your knee up as high as you can. So when it crosses, it comes high on the leg and then away from the knee. And then when you twist to right, it's a little bit easier to hook the foot. Again, don't worry if you can't hook. Just do your best. Right arm over the left. Come down into cool. Shoulders back. On the form, on the eagle, this shape. Release. Good. Now stand in the middle of the mat. Bring your fingers up so that the fingers are lined with the elbows and jump out. So your face, the you're facing on the long edge of the mat. Turn to your left. Virabhadrasana to sink down, nice and deep. The lower you can go, when you swing your hand down, your fingertips might touch the ground. Eventually you want to get to this height. Give a sense of purpose and direction. Now from here, Paschal Kanasana. Some of you, uh, some, some might be able to take your hand to the ground on the inside foot and right arm over the head. If it's too much, you can come up higher and bring your forearm to rest on your left leg, your right arm over the head. Tuck the left side of the seat under, look up, with the hand above you. So make sure your seat is not popping up. Flatten it out, straight line from the back foot right up to the fingertips. Those you know other variations, go ahead. If you know how to take a bind, right arm comes on, uh, behind your back, left arm underneath your left leg. And you join your hands just against, um, just beside your left side of the seat. Bring your left shoulder down, and your hand is inside the seat, and then you just hold your wrist or bind your hands. Fingers together. Break the pose. Bring the hands down to the ground. Lower the back knee down. From here, lean back. Bring your left hand onto your left knee. Lean away from the leg. Right hand can switch towards the back foot. 
can stay here. If you know swan, you can go ahead. You bring a right foot up. So you can take the foot in the crook of the arm. Fingers close to the ears, so you can take your left hand around and bind your hands. And then you push your foot away from your shoulder. So if you want, you can try this one like that. Or you can stay like this, or turn forward. Bring your arms up, Kapiyasana. So different forms for different conditions. All of an offering. Bend your elbows into the shape of a crescent moon. Now, the crescent moon doesn't have any bends or kinks along the way. Keep your arms straight. Break the pose. So you're going to bring the hands down to the inside of the foot now. Walk the left foot out. And just roll to the right so you can get the right forearm down on the ground. The front of the right hip anchors down on the ground. Roll back to the left so you can get the left forearm down. If it's too much, can stay on your hands. But if you keep on tongue open your chest forward, your body will come flat and lower. So if you can, can come right down onto the ground. Sink your chest right down inside the leg, left arm comes outside the foot. Those of you again who know the body, go ahead, your left arm comes around the front of the foot, underneath the knee, over your back. And then your other hand comes onto your back and you can hold the wrist. This is if you're flat down on your chest. Be like a lizard, sunny yourself on a warm earth. Then break the pose. Come back up. Now slide your left foot in a little bit more so it's underneath the knee, bend the toes under and the back foot. Right arm up. So, option one, take your hand to the outside of the knee, left hand to the seat, push into the seat, inhale, lift through the chest, exhale, turn to your left, push your knee towards the right. So you can lean back alternatively and take your hand to the foot if you can reach, push your seat up and in, and then push again and take the foot to the knee towards your right as you turn more to your left, look over your back shoulder. You want to go further, Padi Vita Pasha Kanasana. So you release the right arm up, go down so the elbow comes to the outside of the thigh, right past the knee. And can have your hands in prayer or fist in your uh, left fist in your right hand. Push into your hands so your body comes up, your belly, your chest comes, so your chest comes to your thumbs. Roll the left shoulder all the way back. So as you want to take a bind, make sure your elbow is in the space below the knee. Use your left hand to guide your elbow through. Snake your hand underneath your leg. Left hand comes over your back and hold it from underneath with your other hand. If you want, press the knee away from the ground. Bend the toes under on the right foot and turn. If you're in this position, push through the back heel, extend to the crown left hip back make sure a straight line so no sagging like that okay so keep the lines nice and strong and true from the heel all the way to the top of the head break the pose bring the right hand down to the ground on the inside foot move it a little bit more from the nose and from here you can slide your left foot across to the back and just hold in, uh, bring in front of the foot for Basi Stas. You can stay here. If you know the variations, go ahead. So you might be able to do wild things. Slide your left toes back. Spin on your foot. Keep your hip high, your left arm, your right arm fully extended. And then if you have good, your left foot's flat on the ground, sorry, your right foot's flat on the ground, you can eventually take weight up off your left foot and come up. You can take hold of the knee hold of the foot. Keep your hip high to give you balance and strength. Break the pose. Come back down the same way. Back into downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. So you didn't bring a 
left foot forward, and then spin on your mat, so you're facing along the edge of the mat, come all the way up. Arms up to the side, come back to the starting position. Now, if you're facing the wrong way, when you go to the right, you're facing away from the camera, just jump 180 degrees. I probably should have told you just to come on forward with your right foot, but in any case, so go to the right this time. Go nice and low, reach forward, get a sense of direction and purpose, show leadership, power, and courage. Become the warrior. Into Pasha Kanasana, so again, you can take this form with your form resting on your right knee, left arm over the head, pull left arm back, make sure you don't jam up your neck. Or if you can, take your hand to the ground on the inside of the foot. Extend your line, again, make sure your hip is not jutting up. Flatten out, see so your seat in a little bit. If you want to take a bind, go ahead, left arm comes behind your back, right arm underneath. You have to drop your right shoulder a little bit so you can get your whole arm underneath. And take hold of your fingers in the lock or take the left wrist with your right hand. Push your body against the leg, flat, like you're being pressed between two panes of glass. Break the pose, bring hands down to the ground, lower the back knee down, flatten out the, flatten out the toes. And then sink your seat all the way forward, Bring your right hand on the right knee and slide your left hand back. Just try to art, um, curve your side by, make sure there's no wrinkles in the waist. Lean away from the leg. You can always stay here, or you can try your swan if you have that ability to take up the foot. So hint to bring your foot in the cookie, when the foot comes in the cookie arm, bring your fingers close to the ear so when your right hand comes around, they find hands more easily and then can push your foot away. So think of swan's neck, it doesn't have any sharp angles. Smooth out the lines in your left elbow joint and look forward. If that's too much, kapiyasana. Swing your left arm forward and then reach back. Make a crescent shape move with your body. Feels like you're falling back. Keep your hips forward. now. From here, we're going to come up, more upright, bring our right foot in a little bit closer. And then from here, oops, actually I forgot something. So you want to, did I do this one? I don't, um, okay. <laughs> so you're coming into the lizard. So now you're going to bring your right foot a little bit closer to the edge of the mat, roll to your left, get your left forearm down, roll to the right, right forearm down. And keep creeping forward again. Try to get your chest closer and closer to the ground. If you keep on stretching forward, your body will come down. Try to have your knee higher than the rest of your body. Make sure your knee doesn't fall out to the right. So away from the shoulder. Just move your foot out if you need to so it's underneath the knee so that you can keep the, uh, the, the knee close to the body. And again, come down right on your chest if you like. Those of you who are flexible and your chest is on the ground. Come into a bind. Left arm goes over your back. Right arm, your, your arm comes in front of your foot and underneath the knee and over your back. Your shoulder is pretty much sitting on the foot or the big toe. Now be like a lizard. Fix your gaze, try not to blink. Break the pose, come back onto your hands. Come more upright, your legs should look like a box. Left arm up, take your hands to the outside of the knee, your right hand to your seat. Uh, pushing into the seat or on your hips or you can lean back take the right hand to the heel 
Inhale, push the lower back up and in. And as you push your heel and your knee towards your left, you're turning towards your right. Look over your back shoulder. Try not to slump down into your hips. Keep rising up. Notice where your edge is, you stay here. Or otherwise, Padivita Pasha Konasana. Left arm up, dive down to your right. See how the elbow is way down low, the arm is sitting on the outside of the knee. Hands again in prayer or fist in the hand gives you a little bit more leverage to push into your hand and get your, your belly high in your thigh. And keep on trying to push your center of the chest towards your thumbs. Turn your face and your chest up. If you want to take a bind, right hand can move to the elbow. Pull your hips back so you can make one move for your elbow with your hand to come underneath your leg. Right arm over your back. And then from here, hold it with your left hand. And if you can, lift the back knee up off the ground. Push through the back heel, extend through the crown. And roll your whole body so your chest and face are straight up. But you try to have your shoulders with the same height. Keep strong through the back leg. Make sure you don't drop down through the seat or the back of the knee. Pose, left hand down on the ground in front of the left, a little bit in front of the nose. From here, you just spin towards your right. Right foot can come across the left, cross the ankles, come into Vasti Stasana. If you need to modify, just lower the back of the knee, left knee down. Otherwise, if you want to go into other variations, go ahead. So you can slide your right toes back. Notice I do this, I pull my left foot in. Try to get your seat up as high as you can, your hips up. Left base of toes flat on the ground, the foot at 45 degree angle. And then see if you can just take weight up off your right foot altogether so you can lift it up easily. Eventually, you catch the knee with your hand. Eventually, maybe the foot. Break the pose gracefully back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Now step the right foot to the hands, spin on your feet again, face long into the mat. Now come back into the star position. Good. Chest to switch sides again. Easy to cross mat. Pull your heels in a little bit. Bring your hands to the seat. Push your hips forward. Bend your knees so your toes go, or your knees go over your toes. And then you can use stay with your hands on the seat. Keep your hips down low so for, for balance. Keep your weight on your feet. One hand at a time might move down just below the knees. You have good control at just in this spot. Roll the thighs outwards, roll the shins in. Your thighs will come further in between. And then see if you can push into your feet and straighten your legs. Your hips are still full you're very bendy and you know this, how to get into Urdhva Dhanurasana, you can, your hands be close to the ground, you should be able to see your ground, the ground easily. So you can take the right hand to the ground and then the left hand. Again, according to your abilities and your comfort level. Come back from Urdhva Dhanurasana, just reverse it. Take one hand, push in the back knee, push the knee forward so that you can take the other hand to the leg. And then everybody can walk their way back up. If your hands were on the backs of the knees, walk them one at a time back onto your seat. Arms out to the side, and from here, hinge forward the hips. Prasarita Padatanasana. Take hold of your ankles if you can. You can step on your fingers, um, step your, your feet down on your fingers. Inhale, extend the crown, exhale, bend the elbows. Bring your head between your feet if you can. Try to get your straight line from the seat top of the base of the spine right to the crown. Pull the shoulders back, those who are more flexible can try to bring your head a little bit further in. So back of the head might come in line, the forehead might come in line with the heels, your chest behind your legs. Punch your back around your back. Inhale, come up halfway. Bring your hands forward. So you have 
few options here. You can either walk forward, depending on your flexibility, you can either walk forward and bring your knees onto the ground, line the heels, frog pose. You just try to get your glute to come down. If you're more flexible, you try to bring your seats back in line with your heels more. Right, so just again, do according to your, your ability, don't overstretch, don't come to a place of pain or distress. This is not what you want to transmit. You're very flexible. You can just slide your feet out to try to come with a side split. Okay, if you get all the way down, you can bring your body down. And all the poses eventually just try to find stillness. You try to find the ease by tapping into the divine qualities of being and just try to imagine where they find the ease as well. Then be merged with one another. And then that's when you find the ability to find stillness. Walk one foot in first until you feel comfortable. And then you can start to walk your feet into comfortable distance. Take your arms out to the side, come all the way back up into star. And from here, jump your feet together, arms by side, spine, stand tall like a mountain, Tadasana. From the base of spine, inhale up to the crown. Imagine that as a summit of a mountain. Exhale back down all the way to the base of the spine. Remain solid and unshakable in your devotion to the true. Right now, come down. Headstand, Shil Shasana. So those of you who have a headstand already, you can go ahead into it. If you know how to get into it, please go ahead. Once you're there, take your attention to the space between your eyebrows and then just watch the space. Just try to fix your attention on that seat to divine perception into lotus if you like as well if you have a lotus on others if you want some modifications here are some options if you're very uncomfortable um, getting too far away from the ground you can just keep your head on the ground forehead underneath lift your seat try to bring your upper back forward so your shoulders your hips are over your knees if there's too much um, pressure on the back of the neck and the head you just move your head forward so you're on the top of the head not so much on the back of the neck you want to try a teddy bear, you bring your hands, you bring your head forward so that your hips are over your knees again, and bring your heels, your palms behind your knees, lift your seat. You have to walk your feet forward, have to get your seat over your shoulders so that you can um, come into the pose more easily. So I like to just try to bring just below the knees, on the higher shins, right against the elbows, and then just press against the elbows, and then you can come up. You don't have to come up very high. Pull your toes away from the floor and then you're up off the ground. And she tried to bring your feet up higher. If this is too much pressure on your head, one more option. Take your elbows in front so that you're, you can hold your elbows easily underneath your shoulders. And then don't move your elbows, interlace your fingers and bring your head forward so your head is sitting between your palms. Lift your seat, walk your feet towards your body and then you can pulse up and down across the heels. Try to get your belly to come right into your thighs. I'm sorry, your thighs come right into your belly so your seat comes higher. And then eventually you get the sensation where you want to lift up. Bring one foot back behind. Keep your foot very low to the ground, like a head foot hanging from a tree. Keep your heel close to your seat. Again, you can just play by just hot potatoing with the ground with your foot in front of you. Just Get your toes away from the ground, keep flexing your toes, eventually you might stay there. Eventually you keep pushing through the back foot. You can do this on a wall as well. You're facing the wall, imagine you're facing the wall. You climb up your wall. I can kind of use your imagination here. And my foot's on the wall, my other foot goes back. Make sure you're not too far away from the wall. You should be able to touch the wall easily with your knees still bent. And you just pull your foot away so you don't have to reach for the wall. Okay, so be low effort, but then you just don't use a wall too much. Just keep on pulling your toes away. So 
learn to train yourself to find balance and not be too dependent on the law. Now, get away, come down. Press into your elbows. Come down with control. Hold your head stand. Come down softly. Rest in child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Soften everything. Relax. And then roll your way up. I'd like to come into the mother of the poses, queen of the postures, Shavigasa. Another inversion. So we'll come to the front of the mat. So we have most of the mat behind you. And from here, just roll back. Shift your arms and set your feet over your head. Move your arms back behind your back. Try to hold your, um, interlace your fingers and press heels, your palms together. No, just to get your arms behind your back and you can find a straight line and then she can go up. So if it's too disassorient enough, you can keep your knees close to your shoulders just like that, or take your hands to your lower back and come up one of both legs at a time. Try to find a straight line from the chin. Heels your palms down to the mids as um, low as you can, but keep your elbows close, um, as close together as possible. So once you have a lotus, go ahead and use your hands to help you. Bring your feet a little bit over your head a little bit. If you don't have a full lotus, just keep your legs straight. And those here right on top of your shoulders, we're gonna let you take your hands up off your the ground and onto your thighs. Now concentrate again on the space between the eyebrows. Keep on trying to find God in all the forms. I am you, you are me, I am that, that I am. Now for God is present in all forms equally. Each life form of all the magnificent divine qualities of God. If you notice, it makes your mind one pointed or more one pointed. Try to have knees high in your hips. Next, without changing your mindset, come work sitting on the space between your eyebrows. If you have a lotus, come into Kundasana, so you can take a bind. Go right ahead, I wrap the arms around the outside of the legs, join the hands just beneath the feet. If you don't have a lotus, come down and plow. Hinge at the hips, send your feet down again. No crash landing for the feet on the ground. Come down soft option to drop your thighs against your body and bring your knees against the side of your head. Feel the jaw in your senses, draw from the inputs coming from the ears and the eyes. Remove all the distractions, the more less distractions you have to contend with, the more your concentration could improve. down slowly, allow your legs to drag over your body close, keep your legs straight. Eventually, you will land your seat on your wrists. Keep bringing your legs down until they're at 45 degrees. And once they're halfway down, push into your elbows, lift your upper back up off the mat, your, your back up off the mat. So you're sitting like a V position. Now charge your legs, connect the toes, push your chest up higher, and bring the top of the to the ground. 
Now you have a few options here. If it's too much, you bring your legs right down to the ground, but keep sitting on your elbows. Okay. Or if you're more, if you're stronger, take your arms out from underneath and bring your hands in front of your legs and your palms together. Flying fish. Breathe very fast through your nose, like a sniff, like a sniffing dog. Okay. Slide your feet in if you're on the ground already. Bring your fingertips beside your head and then lift your seat up, push into your fingertips and pull your head back a little bit more behind your head. Turn your hands around so your fingers are facing towards the toes a little bit out. You can either stay here or press your head up. Take out breath in, lift up, lift up off your heels as well. Much, you can stay in bridge. So your shoulders will stay on the ground and just lift your chest and your seat up. Interlace your fingers underneath your seat so you can do this as well. Okay? So depending where you are, lift up again, rock back and forth if you like, push your chest forward in front of your arms. Try to straighten your arms and your legs as much as possible. So if it becomes too much, don't wait until the last minute to come down so you come crashing down without control. Always move in a way that is mindful. So from here, just rest a moment in Shavasana, breathe in, breathe out. Relax, imagine you're fainting. Bring your arms up over the head, come up to seat. Close to your seat, if you can, bring your hands a little bit um, just behind or beside, and see if you can stand up from here. So just bring your feet together and really push your belly into your thighs, tuck your chin in, and see if you can straighten your legs. Come right to Uttanasana. Press your forearms against the backs of the legs, step on your fingers, lift your heels, and pull your face right in towards your shins. If this is too much, bend your knees as much as you need to. Come up any which way you like and just hold the backs of your, um, hold your elbows behind your knees and just keep on pushing your body into your legs. Try not to lose the contact. Imagine you let go, straighten your legs and pull your arms down a little bit further. And from here, lift your head and from here walk your feet out a little bit more so your feet are about two to three inches away from the edges of the mat. Bend your knees, sweep your arms around the outside and through between. Some might stay here like this, your belly between your thighs. You can also interlace your fingers like this. This is where you're at. If you can go further, slide your arms down a little bit more. Tuck your chin in and see if you can bring your hands a couple around your ears. Eventually you might feel those who are more flexible. You can interlace your fingers and just form a helmet for the back of the head, pull your head through. Straighten your legs. Make sure your arms are a little lower than the knees so that you can actually straighten your legs. This is called stork pose. Release, bring hands to the ground just for fun. Bend your arms, you can squeeze your, um, those you, so you have, you can either go into Bakasana, so you can keep your arms straight, bring your knees behind into your armpits, lean forward and pick up your feet. If it's, but you might want to start with crow, so you bend your elbows, you slide your arms down, so that your elbows against the insides of the shins, and then from here on the outside of the shins, and then just lift up off your heels, come forward, press into your hands, and then just Keep your head higher than your seat so you don't take a nose dive down to the ground and land on your nose. Flex your feet. Sometimes it helps to keep your gut muscles engaged. Come back down. So 
now come into a squat. Press your shoulders back a little bit. Bring your heels, your palms down to the line of this, uh, the elbows. Now from here, Adha Titibhasana. So you're going to slide your left shoulder in a little bit. And then from here, lift your seat just as much as you need to bring your left arm over your back. And then from here, take your right arm behind, uh, up, for a fist, and throw it down into your receiving left hand. And if you can, start to straighten out the right, uh, the right leg by lifting the right hip up. Eventually, you might be able to get your left leg straight too, but no matter if you can't. Keep your head down for a moment, allow the blood to wash the brain. Now from here, those who want to try Bird of Paradise, you come up with your left leg. So you lift up your left heel, you really push into your right foot, take half breath in, pull on your arms and keep pushing to the back of the leg to come up. Wait until you're up and then keep your knee, keep close to the shoulder so that you can straighten the leg. the other side. So I'm going to do it another way as you can see. So you bring your right shoulder in really close, your elbows right close to roots. Lift the seat a little bit so you can get your whole arm underneath your leg. So it comes onto your back, left arm comes up, catch it with your right hand. And then from here straighten out your left leg. Raise the left hip up. Keep your head close to the ground. Eventually you might be able to get your right leg straight too. Elongate the spine, get the head close to the ground. You can stay here the whole time if you like. If you want to come up in Bird of Paradise, prepare. Pull your heel in a little bit, so your foot, your right hand foot in, lift the heel, and you have to really push into your left foot. Take a half breath in to lighten yourself to come up. Keep pushing into the back of the leg with your arm. And once you're up, keep your shoulders back. Keep your knee pressing against the back of the arm. And bring the leg up a little bit to the left. Try to get your leg up high, straight line from one foot down to the other. And then release, come back down gracefully back into the squat. Okay, now just sit on the ground, bring your feet out. Um, Kurmasana. So you can slide your forearms underneath your legs and then take hold of the outer edge of the feet and bring your head down. So option one, if you already know how to get into Kurmasana, you can go right ahead. So your feet are just a little bit past shoulder width and you lean to one side, you bring your left arm back, so your arm is going to be close, your arm's going to be close to your hip. And then lean to the other side to get your other arm through. You want to have your legs as close to shoulder as possible so they don't come down on the elbows. That's not because they won't be comfortable. And then see if you can get your legs the weight, the weight of the legs to come down onto your butt, onto your arms so they can go down. Eventually your shoulders might come down, your chin, if you keep going forward, maybe your whole belly will come down. Advanced practitioners, you're very flexible, your elbows are free. your back, your lower back, this will help the belly to come right down. In any pose, variation you're doing, take your tip into the base of the spine. Keep your concentration there, feel as though all the blood will rest in there. Come back out. Purvottanasana. 
Bring your feet together. Slide your feet in a little bit. Fingers facing away. Dig into the heels. Push your hips up. Roll your hips up. Your chest up high. Roll the thighs in so you can get your toes to ground. If you're like this, it's going to feel heavy. You won't be able to sustain this too long. Your hips will sag. So we try to roll the thighs towards one another. Push the knees towards one another, the inner thighs. If it's too much, you have to bring your feet in underneath your knees. Bench pose. And bring your head back all the way. Breathe very fast in the nose. So you're on your knees, bend the toes under. So from here, press your hands into the seat, push your hips forward, lean back, bring your right hand on your right heel, left hand on your left heel. See if you can bring your heels together and cross your baby fingers together and lean your hips forward so you're about to fall onto your thighs. Don't actually fall forward, but control by pressing into the base of the toes. Hold with your thumbs and your index fingers on your heels. Head all the way back. Now, bring your shoulders back so they're beyond, behind your heels. One hand to your seat, and the other hand. Push your way back up. Good. From here, sit on your heels. Knees together, child's pose, bring your forehead down, relax, breathe in, breathe out. Roll up, camel pose. Lift up again. Knees are a little bit about hip width apart. Hands on the seat again. Again, lean back, right hand on the right foot, left hand, left foot. If you can't reach your feet easily, you can either keep your hands on your seat or repeat rabbit. Bend your toes up, uh, bend your toes under so your heels are higher to, to take hold of. If you can do cat camel, just push your hips forward. The chest is the highest point, like the hump of the camel's back. The head goes all the way back. Push your chest up as high as you can. Resilient like the camel, you roll long, long stretches without any sustenance. Cultivate fortitude and stamina. Now, prepare to exit. Put your hands back onto your seat one at a time and push your way back up. And again, child's pose. Put your hand on your back right here on this side of the spine if you'd like. to go into Kapotasana this time or the variations. So um, you can take one arm, take hold of the elbow, really keep the hands strong, flex your hands, and you have to really anchor down to the shins and the tops of the feet. Keep your thighs strong, keep your core strong. Go back, go back, and get your hand on the ground. If you can, get your hand on the ground. Other way, get into it. Bring your elbows close to your ears, spread your fingers, both hands together, your hands a little bit stronger. So lean back again, roll the thighs inwards, and let your fingers come down to the ground. You can separate your hands, take hold of the edges of the mat, like this, and just work like that. Alternatively, you can start from your back. If you can get on your back like this, then bring your fingers just on either side of the head, lift your uh, Lift your seat, slide your head back. Again, you can take hold of the edge of the mat and then lift your head up. Those who are very flexible can go into Kapotasana. So your fingers on the ground and just walk your hands until you can get your elbows on the ground. So you might be able to take hold of your toes or your heels and get your elbows on the ground. Go according to your abilities. Camel is always an option if none of these are accepted. Oh, 
toes. And you're strengthening either throw your hips forward, push off your hands and come up. Otherwise, you come back onto your back. And depending on which way you came up, you're either resting in child's pose or on your back. Breathe in. Breathe out. And to take out the effort completely in, in an instant. And then come back up. So from here, just one final twist. Left leg extends, right foot on the other on the outside of the left leg. Your foot is somewhere between the knee and the ankle. If you want, you can do full Adamatyandrasana, you would fold the left leg so the foot is beside, not underneath the feet. So it's beside the right hip, you can do it this way. So demonstrate this way first, right hand just against the back, the sending back left arm up. And take hold of the outside of the thigh, inhale, push forward, back up and in. Exhale, turn to the right. If you want, you can reach down for your left heel with your left hand. And as you pull on the heel, you keep pushing with your left elbow as well, your left arm. And then keep your lower back lifted. Look to your right. Twist from the base, very low in the body, in the base of the hips, until the whole spiral, the whole, the whole spine spirals. your chin comes over the back shoulder. And release. Try it on the other side now. So if your leg was extended, if you can't, when you fold the legs, if you're sitting on one side more and you can't get the other side down, that's an indication that maybe you keep your leg, better keep your legs straight. So demonstrate this way this time, left arm up. Uh, sorry, right arm up, left foot to the other side of the right leg, and then you take your forearm to the outside of the left thigh. Inhale, push the lower back up and in, and turn more and more to your left with each exhale. Shoulders in one line, chest is fully open. Your chin comes over the back shoulder. Make sure you're not leaning back. Keep your hand close to your seat, right down the center of the back. Break the pose. Lie on your back. Gently make your way down. Landings again, just ease your way down softly. This is where you release all the physical, mental, and emotional barriers that prevent you from being fully receptive to all the incoming gifts. Just allow your body to relax completely, let go of all tension. whether it be in a mental, physical, or emotional sense through the offering of your practice, of your, uh, of the fruits of your efforts, it now comes back to you. Close the eyes and just listen to the instructions that guide you through to an even deeper to receive. Imagine yourself as a vessel now receiving it all. Best of the best. So on the left toes, inhale all the way up through the left leg, right up through the spine to the crown. Exhale back down. Same path down the spine. Feel the left side of the back just falling into the ground, sinking. Left hip, left
right toes now. Inhale up, right foot. Let's move the right leg to the hip. Your spine all the way to the ground. Exhale again, back to staying back. On the left fingertips now. Inhale up the left arm, all the way up through the shoulders, the neck, and to the crown. Exhale back down. Feel the left side, the head, the shoulder, the arm becoming dead like and heavy as you release all the muscles. Limp. Exhale back the same way. Feel the right side of the head, the neck becoming relaxed and heavy. The right shoulder drooping from this heaviness. The right arm all the way, all throughout the length of it, right to the hand. Dead light. From the crown, inhale down the spine. Exhale all the way back up, feel any residual tension that wasn't released the first time. Just dropping out of the body, feel the whole left side becoming dead light, heavy as can be. From the crown, inhale down the spine. feeling completely dead, lifeless on that side. From the solar plexus now, inhale up through to the crown, turn on the spine, exhale back down, remaining established in that source, the power within. From the fingers and the toes, from the pores of the skin, Bring in the best of the best now. Draw it all the way up through the legs, the arms, right up through the spine, right up to the crown. Exhale back down the spine and out through the arms, through the legs, in all directions. Send out all the impurities out of the pores of the skin. Anything you don't need, just take it out. Away. Release it all. the spine, inhale up through the spine, through the crown. Exhale back down to the base of the spine. Feel grounded, feel steady, feel anchored. A new connection with all beings. Merge with God with the infinite. Set your sights on the infinite. Imagine you're looking out into outer space. this blanket of darkness studded by stars, planets, everything you can imagine, going as far as the eye can see and beyond. This is not even, it's not even a fraction of God's infinite love and compassion and wisdom. Just try to see that intention now of just naming and establishing God by saying that to yourself a few times. I remain established in God. Now 
mouth to pray, carry that into the world. Continue this shin off the mat, spreading love to all beings. Set an example for all, both especially those who don't have the knowledge yet. Love them all. Love all beings equally, whether it's your parents, your cow, your parent, your child. Thank you so much for joining.